He's so good, eh? He's so comical. Pressure on that lip, yeah. I just raised it a little bit of angle, but I don't think that holds. This. This was my sales and sample kit for many years. Now it's, it's grown and stuff's been added. I've taken a lot of stuff out. I put a lot of new projects in here. But anyway, if you went to a show or somewhere and you walked in there and you know you wanted. To, this is a guy's shop, you say, hey, this is what I do, you know. I make miniature tools. Now, every tool in here works. See the, sh see the sh <laughs> shavings? <laughs> but everything in this case, at a minimum, I made 25. At a maximum, for instance, this piece here, I did 500 of these. Wow. So the average quantity, like these Stanley transitions, I think I did 250 of those. What I did is after I finished a couple of them, I took a, a oh, that's cool. uh, oh, that's you know, a nice. section of cull casting, so to speak. But this, this was the prototype, but that's all the pieces. And uh, I'm going to show you a little interesting tidbit here. You see this? Did you mean you don't build this as well for it? Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. You, you, see, you see that little spring right there? Mm -hmm. Little tiny spring? That mounts right right here on the gun. It's called a plunger tube. That's the only part I didn't make is that spring. I made all the rest of the springs, but the reason I didn't make that on a lady's wristwatch, where they've got the little snap clip that holds mm -hmm. the band up, if you take those apart, that's, oh, that? you got that little spring in there. That it was perfect, you know, so. Only, only did four of them, but uh, you know, they. I could have sold probably a dozen. I could have easily sold a dozen, but oh. hey. You know, at some point you got to quit punishing yourself. <laughs> <laughs> this, uh, I made, I don't know, three or four hundred of these. Well, this I'm here, let me shoot another one. You see my line of bridge ports over there? Yeah. Yeah. Here's, here's what they looked like when they came from, came back from the foundry. <laughs> All right, so, okay. <laughs> what I do is I leave this thing set up here. In a, in a three or four day process, I will have a, probably a hundred of these waxes. But this is what I shot for just what y'all got here. I'll open it up. Whiskers. Those are vent lines. So when you're shooting the wax up there, it pushes the air out. But you gotta be really careful on this guy to get him out of here because that little area right there that's missing that holds the, the head. That that's what got broke off on every one of them. Yeah. <laughs> But what I'm gonna do is put this this little nozzle. That wax <laughs> that wax is about 140, 145 degrees. Okay. I mean it'll it, it'll it'll sort of burn you, but not too bad. <laughs> but anyway, what I'm gonna do is put this guy over here and get it primed. And I'm gonna go. Okay, so it's full of wax right now. It didn't. You say I didn't have to move it very far. So. Give it about three minutes, you open it up, you got another one. Oh, here, this is a rose engine lathe, mm. which is going to, well, this is a more of a, this is a whole saw. But I bet, as soon as I finish the uh, Monarchs, I'm going to finish painting it. The table, I, I finished the table, it's, and I'll put this on it and get this guy operational. And once it's operational. And I'll be over here every day. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll make a miniature of it. Yeah. So, so you'll make a miniature of it once you've made. They're all sold, too. Yeah. What, really? what, sold. yeah once I put the big ones back together. So having a Rose engine lathe, which does, you can either do train type boxes with a, with a, a live cutter and it cuts the wood, or if you put metal on there, like a watch case, a zippo lighter, uh, a, a watch dial, mm -hmm. it, the, all the, they call it guillotine, it's all done around the circle. So this guy here is, is a, the straight line machine, and that's what it does. Oh, wow. It does everything in a straight line. Now, if you can imagine th these patterns are all being done in a circle, that's what this machine does. And th this guy here, I bought a pen attachment, so you know if I if I knew anybody that was doing fountain pens, they could they could you know bar it maybe one afternoon. He always does that to me. You know? That's yeah, that's yeah, that's one of those machines. But 
of all, of all the machines I've bought in my lifetime, I paid more for this one machine than probably the total sum of all the rest. That's why Tim really? Really? It was. <laughs> it, it was expensive. Yeah. Uh, if you want to cut, you can buy miniature end mills. I think probably commercially about the smallest you could get is maybe a six, five or six thousand. That's there's a tip on there. It's two thousands, and uh, it's made out of a dental burr, and I can make that cutter in less than a minute. It's a process I stumbled into myself. Anyway, <laughs> most of all the stuff on that shelf and those blue things down there in the oven. That's what all I do my casting with, mm. the investment casting. Uh, here's a here's a machine that's very not that well known in the woodworking industry. It's called the overall grinder. <laughs> And, Found uh, all those pool cues that you, you got bored of. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this, this, uh, is, uh, this is what you call a full splice. It, it'll do the the butts. So it'll do this. It'll do the splice cut. Right. Uh, it'll do the, sh the butts and the shafts. All computer controlled. Wow. Uh, but I figured it out. I got it running. I tested it. And... I got bored and that stuff. <laughs> anyway, uh, here's, a, here's a machine that I built from scratch. This guy here. Inside this heated chamber, you put these canisters. And you, what you do is you fill those with wax. And I've got a box down there that's got a light bulb in it and a thermostat. And I can keep that wax almost at a working temperature. So when, when you shoot the wax out of here, and this, I call this big bursa, that little <laughs> pot in there, it's hand. This, there's a hydraulic or air cylinder underneath there that's got like 11 inch stroke. Mm. So I can put a, a, a mole here and pull this lever right here and it energizes the solenoid. I always tell people, if you could hook this thing up to an elephant's butt, you could have wax coming out of his ears, you know? <laughs> Here, this is the, uh, this machine right here, the pantograph, it was made in uh, Toledo, I think Toledo, Toledo, Ohio. This is 1899. Uh, I've got a, a metal lathe in here that cost $35 in a catalog. This machine was $75. In 1899. In 1899. Yeah. Wow. Now I've got one earlier than this. This 1855. But the, the ivory plane that Tim was talking about. This is what I did the scrumshaw with on it. Uh, Look at these. Really had to be machine made. So. Look at these. Yeah. But you see the uh, the big plate up there. That I sh that's just like the one that, yeah. you, that you held. There. Uh, on that wall over a raster pattern. But all, he, all the program did, when he generated the code, he it just said remove the background, and he said back and forth, back and forth. It, I think you took, need to look closer than my eyes can fit this. <laughs> it took about- And it's a genuine, that's a genuine Kelly Axe brand right. as well, that's the real deal. Oh yeah, that's the real deal. I made this okay. one, but the barrel is only drilled to right here. But when I made this, the only tool I had in the shop was a drill press, okay? Wow. And uh, this was made, three people were involved in making this rifle here. I thought it was the most beautiful thing I when I bought it, but, but there's two or three things wrong with it. First of all, <laughs> it's a third scale rifle. This is the size that the lock should be. You see the difference in right. the scale? These are my locks. Uh, yeah, that looks massive if that was it, full size. That's like a hand crank. Oh yeah. Uh, than a, yeah. But one guy did the lock, one guy inlet the lock into the stock and, and shaped the stock. A third guy who is still living, the other two guys are dead, but the third guy, Alan, uh, uh, John Shippers, uh, he's a well-known gun builder, and he did the, the carving and the engraving. Now, uh, not, not anything really fancy on the engraving, but he did what they call incise carving. You see, it's just a very... Just mm. kind of an incise cut. Yeah. What what I did, I, I copied the the actual three dimensional 
So you've cut yeah. away from it to leave Carved. everything else raised. Yeah. Can I hold that? Sure. Uh, <laughs> now, if you push, if you push this little button, that one of those buttons, push it go down. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Of course, of, of course, course it was. Sure. <laughs> oh, that, 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 that was it. Two questions. Oh, that's so cute. That was from the women. Of course. And then the men, will it shoot? Yes, it will. <laughs> and it will shoot? Yeah, oh yeah. It's cute. It's not my favorite, but guess where it's made? USA. Oh, Scotland? Yeah. Nice. Wow. <laughs>